Budget gaming laptops suck. They just do. To get anything under $500, you'll need to go for something cheap and typically built pretty poorly with a terrible keyboard and usually the actual gaming performance just isn't that great. But if you're a normal person who wants to game on the go, well, you're probably gonna buy one anyways, let's be honest. Now, if you're subscribed to this channel, which you should be, you're probably going to do something really stupid to save a few bucks. And, well, God truly has left us in the tech community. All right, I think I already got a little ahead of myself here. I've been on a challenge to find the cheapest, best built and upgradable laptop I can possibly find, which since we're living in the worst timeline is really difficult. My previous favorite laptop that checked all the boxes was the Lenovo T430, but once I tried to throw a GPU into the mix for some gaming, it really wasn't the best experience, and it didn't actually do anything at all. So back to the drawing board, or I guess ThinkPad board, ThinkBoard? Back to the ThinkBoard. My only idea left is something that I hope will at least be a kind of good compromise, even if it's not exactly what I want. The ThinkPad T480 it has a quad core, i7 CPU from about 2018, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 upgradable RAM, some pretty good modability options, and just overall it's pretty upgradable compared to what we get nowadays. And well, I mean, I can't change the CPU, but hey, it does have a lightning port. So I wanted to see if we can get an amazing budget, well, calling this a gaming laptop wouldn't exactly be honest, so we'll call it a portable gaming slash workstation setup for less than it costs to buy a proper used gaming laptop. Some days I really do wonder if it's worth being quite this cheap. My truck isn't even the same color all the way around. Now there's my cap. I couldn't afford the blackout package on my damn cat. Got the base model. Did get the performance pack though. But as it turns out, eGPU enclosures are still somewhat expensive to people who compare savings account rates. God, I'm boring. I need to go outside. But I can't take my gaming setup outside because it, it's this, god damn it. I tried looking at the used market on eBay without much luck. Sure, eGPU enclosures have gotten a lot cheaper over the past few years, but I don't want to pair a cheap laptop with an eGPU enclosure that costs more than the laptop. It kind of defeats the whole budget thing. Yeah, you can use it on newer laptops, but still, it's videos, stuff, money, I don't know. After quite a lot of research though and comparing different prices and setups, both in the new and used market, I ended up with this little guy. This is a, oh boy, TH3P4 Lite Mini. It was $120 and came with this plastic junk I didn't order nor want. Thanks, AliExpress. I really wanted to go for the used route to kind of keep in with the rest of the build, and especially because that would also make this the cheapest possible setup. But I really couldn't find these used at all at the time. And well, I mean, it was $120. That's pretty cheap for what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know what more can you ask for. The adapter itself is actually pretty stupidly simple. It's, it's literally just a PCIe like slot that hooks up to your Thunderbolt port and lets you plop a GPU on top. That's literally it. For the GPU, I wanted to get something that didn't need external power. Partially because I wasn't sure if this adapter supported a GPU that required external power, and partially because that would make this setup even more bulky and expensive because I would need some sort of power supply. Not my favorite. And that would just really not work and make this entire thing even more pointless. So, the best GPU that I have that doesn't need external power is a GTX 650, which is really on the low end, but I don't think that will be an issue for performance with this old 4-core mobile chip in a laptop that can't really breathe that good, is what I wrote when I started this video. But the GTX 650 did not work out, so this is a GTX 1650. I added a 1 to it. Hooray. This does not require external power either, and this will actually be the GPU that is hopefully strong enough to harness the power of this four core i7 from 2018. And if for whatever reason you wanna build this yourself, I don't know why I always say for whatever reason, are my ideas that bad? Go ahead and check out my affiliate links in the description so I don't go bankrupt making funny tech videos for you guys. Before I plug it in though, I did need one more thing, just a basic generic DC barrel jack. Uh, I got this one for like 20 bucks on Amazon, hooked right up, worked, it's a barrel jack, what do you want? But once I got that, I was able to plug in my ThinkPad, the eGPU adapter, and then plop my GPU right onto it. I thought, honestly, this was going to be just about the biggest faff to get working. But after I installed the Intel Thunderbolt drivers and NVIDIA drivers, it just instantly popped right up and it was recognized. I honestly didn't even think this was gonna work at all, but wow, just instantly pops up, supported everything. I mean, it even shows in Task Manager. 
I was really, really expecting a lot more drama. This might end up being a really short video. Well, let's actually see if this does anything compared to the T430 and test some games and other stuff. So let's go ahead and start with the game that was barely working before the eGPU, Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite before the GTX 1650 at low settings 1080p could just barely hold an average frame rate of 23 FPS with a minimum of 16 and a 1% low of 15. Really not even playable for me. Maybe if you lowered it to 720p, but I mean, even then, what about after I added the 1650? Did it even work? Did it support the game? Was there output? What is life? Well, I hooked it up, launched Bioshock Infinite, and after one or two crashes for seemingly no reason, the GPU actually spun up and it seemed to be working. Nice. I loaded up my game and damn, same settings as before with an average frame rate of 52 FPS and a 1% low of 33 FPS. It's actually playable now in 1080p. Yeah, I mean, it's it's low settings still, but holy shit, it works now. You couldn't play this before. I mean, I'm excited now. That's really cool. I really thought this was going to be another T430 situation. I just wasted another 120 bucks on a video. I mean, oh boy, let's get in there, bud. So let's see how Minecraft plays. It could run decently well before, but it really wasn't my favorite experience. And my hunch is that the CPU was the major bottleneck. But hey, you never know, right? That's why we're testing. So at 1080p, 12 chunks render and simulation in a single player world, I got an average of 38 FPS with a 1% low of 19 FPS. It was playable, but there was quite a bit of stutter when loading new chunks. And sometimes if you're just loading a lot of chunks in general, even if they were loaded previously, it isn't that great. Either way though, it is playable even without optimization mods. When I added the GTX 1650 though, I was up to an average of 67 FPS with the 1% lows of 30 FPS. It was still stuttering pretty good in loading new chunks and the 1% low didn't really improve much, but when not loading too many chunks, it was way, 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 way smoother with way less stuttering and it just, oh. I mean, with some performance enhancing mods like Optifine or something, I bet you could even run some basic shaders with this setup now. Just don't get your hopes up with modded. Also, this footage is not how I tested the laptop. This is footage from my Minecraft server. It's actually somewhat active, which is pretty nifty. And if you want to join, join my Discord. Find the IP there. It's pinned. Super simple. Man, double plug and one plug. I'm getting good at this. Okay, okay. So, yippee. All the old baby games work fine. Let's try something a little bit more demanding with Grand Theft Auto V. 1080p, all normal, or I guess low settings with the built-in benchmark. Without the 1650, the T40 was barely able to maintain an FPS above 20, which is pretty unplayable for me. Unless you've never done better than an N64, in which case this is perfect for you. If, however, you stopped living in the 90s, like some of us, even though I wasn't really a 90s kid, either way, N64 FPS doesn't work for you. So let's try and get some better performance. With the GTX 1650 now, we got an average of 45 FPS with a 1% low of 27, which again, not ideal, but that's way better and totally playable. And the 1% lows really weren't too bad either. Let's hop into a really modern game with Doom Eternal. I ran it at 1080p, all low settings because, I mean, well, obviously, and uh, I couldn't even get out of the menu. It just runs like complete trash. And honestly, it really isn't worth trying to force this poor laptop to try and run a game and get an average FPS of five for our viewing pleasure. So let's toss the 1650 up there and just see how she does. Don't know why I said she, like it's a boat. It's really weird. Once I threw in the 1650, the menu was actually playable. God damn, look at that. Menus, that's nifty. <laughs> now, if that's not amazing, with this revelation of working menus, I hopped into the game and shockingly was greeted by a perfectly playable Doom Eternal experience. There was pretty minimal stuttering and the average FPS was 53 with 1% low of 34. Maybe not the best for a game like Doom, but I mean, again, going from completely unplayable to playable is a damn good upgrade, even if it's not the best. I mean, when I was a young teen lusting after Bulldozer, I would have killed for a setup like this. And then I would have killed myself after seeing how bad Bulldozer was when I got an FX chip. Anyways, synthetic testing. And real quick, Premiere without the 1650 took well over 40 minutes to export. And it seems I actually got stuck exporting because it never truly finished. But with the 1650, it finished in about 15 or so minutes. But for whatever reason, every time I render in Premiere, my recording just randomly goes black and doesn't really work at all, even though I'm using a capture card. And this is the only time it does it on this laptop with the 1650 plugged in and no other times. Really, really strange. I've never seen anything like it before. Either way, I went ahead and tested Blender BMW after that really fast. And without the GPU, it finished in 12 minutes and nine seconds. And with the GPU, which, <laughs> holy, 
uh, finished in one minute and 24 seconds. A pretty drastic improvement, in my opinion, over no GPU. Like, a seriously drastic improvement. If you're a Blender renderer and have a T480, there may be some reason for you to actually get this if you need to do stuff in Blender. And... <sighs> Let's just talk about the laggy elephant in the room. This whole setup, laptop, eGPU dock, and GPU included, is around $400 to $450 or so all in. And well, it's not an amazing deal. And to be frank, the performance really isn't amazing for a GTX 1650. Part of the problem is using this Thunderbolt 3 port is only giving us two PCIe lanes. And the other part of the problem is, well, this is a quad-core CPU from 2018 and a laptop that isn't really designed to be used for gaming. So we are leaving some performance on the table just with that. Now, how much performance, you might be asking yourself. Well, let's take this same exact GPU and throw it into a PC with the budget in the $400 range. Here we have what is mostly my system from my $500 Ryzen build video, except we're using the GTX 1650 instead of an RX 6600. This also has my Ryzen 5 3600 and 16GB of Corsair Vengeance RAM that I cannot be bothered to check the speed of right now. Maybe I'll end up going back and fixing this part of the script. Maybe I'll only remember right now as I'm reading this and really, really don't wanna go and fix that now. So either way, let's just finish a few small tests real quick. Starting with Bioshock Infinite, same settings as before. Low 1080p, we got an average of <laughs> uh, 237 FPS with a 1% low of 152. A completely flawless, buttery smooth experience. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit higher. Okay, let's just go to Doom Eternal and, uh, yeah. Average of 123 FPS, or 123 FPS. 1% low of 85. This is, this is just a wildly different experience. And honestly, you could easily crank your settings a decent amount more than just low and still get a solid 60 FPS if you wanted to. So, okay. I think you already get the point. But what about a synthetic load? Blender BMW finished in a uh, one minute, five seconds. Yeah, kind of, kind of quick. Not as drastic as the other tests, but man, that is, it's still faster. It's quite a bit faster. Use cases for this are, to be honest, pretty strange. To me, the biggest use case is already just having a ThinkPad T480 or similar laptop, just because it's a really nice, solid laptop and adding the GPU later for the few times you want a game could be a good idea since you can just hook it up real quick and get some good performance instead of having to throw away your entire laptop and get a whole new laptop that will most likely have some pretty major compromises for the same price with minimal performance games or spend a ton more money to get a decent used gaming laptop that will run hotter with worse battery life and honestly probably have a horrible keyboard compared to the T480 keyboard at least. Which, if you do want to see me get a similarly priced gaming laptop to compete with this T480 setup, subscribe that video is finally finally coming